Let's break it down. Get somebody who sees your video for the first time, recommended to them on YouTube, they click through. Then they watch eight, nine or 10 minutes of it. And, and your videos are so optimized that they're watching almost to the end. And then when the video's over or another video is recommended, they watch another two, three, four, five, six of your videos. That is a viral revolution on YouTube, my friend. So the YouTube algorithm can sometimes feel really overwhelming. What matters and how do you actually get your videos shown in front of the masses? Well, did you know that YouTube actually gives you the exact things that you need to know, the exact metrics in order to be able to master the algorithm. In today's video, we're going to go really deep. If you didn't know at Think Media, we are all about educating you on how to do YouTube right, whether you're just starting or whether you already have a successful business and you want to add YouTube to your marketing strategy. Well, my name is Heather Torres and you're listening to the Think Media podcast, the number one podcast where we help you build your influence on YouTube and then Take that influence and build a high impact and a high profit YouTube channel. And on today's episode, we're going back to school. That's right. We are taking you into the YouTube education where we're going to share with you the four metrics that really matter to YouTube. Inside of your YouTube creator studio is where you're going to find all this information. So we're going to walk through all those numbers. I know. It can feel overwhelming and intimidating when you start to open up your YouTube studio and you see all these graphs and numbers and you just wanna know which ones matter, like which ones should you focus on and why these ones are so important. So Sean, who is really the YouTube scientist, is going to be diving deep into all of these different acronyms and things that you need to know. So get your notebook ready, get your coffee ready, and let's dive into the YouTube class for today. So what are the four most important YouTube metrics for getting massive views? If you really wanna unlock the YouTube algorithm, these are really the four levers that are gonna get you the most momentum on YouTube right now. And the first one is CTR. That stands for click-through rate. Now, this is the definition. Impressions click-through rate measures how often viewers watched a video after seeing a registered impression on YouTube. What does that mean? It means that before someone can watch a second or a minute or 10 minutes of your content, they have to actually make a decision to click on the video. They have to make a decision to tap on that thumbnail on that video on their smartphone. And so um, this really starts with thinking about how can you grab people's attention with your title, with your thumbnail, and with your topic. The goal is to get as high a click-through rate as possible. And let's define what an impression is. You know, if you were to think, Sean, how do I actually get people to discover me on YouTube in the first place? How do I actually get views when nobody knows me? Of course, maybe you have someone off of the platform on Twitter that you can send a tweet to your video and they go watch your video. Well, that's different. That's external traffic. Maybe you've built up an email list and you send an email. Hey, here's my new video. But on the platform itself, you have to remember, YouTube will actually recommend your video. It'll put your video in front of other people. Where? On the homepage. Right when you log into YouTube on that first page, there's videos being suggested to you. If you make videos related to other videos, they're watching a particular video, they don't know you yet, they see a video suggested below the video or on the right side if they're watching on desktop. Well, that's what an impression means. It's a chance to see your thumbnail on their mobile phone on their desktop, and so the click-through rate is the percentage of people based on the impression that click through on your video. Now, what's a good click-through rate? It's hard to say because it varies, like the wider your range of impressions, like some of our videos get 40 million impressions and have like a 4% click-through rate. Typically, as your video is shared wider, the click-through rate is lower. Now, sometimes you might have a 80% click-through rate because all of your subscribers click on your video and it doesn't really get shared maybe outside of your community. If you want a metric for this one, if you can get over 10%, your video is probably gonna pop off. And if your video stays at over 15% on a click-through rate, um, while it keeps being shared to new people, then you might have a viral video on your hands. But when I'm asking myself, man, what are the most important metrics? Number one is click-through rate. And you should ask, 
how can I get my click-through rate higher? Don't even actually worry about what it is today. Measure it and try to make it higher tomorrow. If it's 4% right now, try to get it to 4.5. And think about how you can optimize your titles to be really interesting and clickable, thumbnails to be really interesting and clickable, and that you're talking about the right topics in your videos that people actually wanna click on. The second one is the average view duration. Let's think about this in order, okay? They saw your video on the homepage. Hmm, that looks interesting. Wow, that thumbnail provoked my interest. I do wanna learn more about that. That does look funny or entertaining. They click on it. Now, how long do they stay on the video and watch it? Number two is AVD, average view duration. So this is the amount of time viewers spend watching your video, the total amount of time. The higher the number, the better. So. What this means is your average view duration could be two minutes, four minutes, or eight minutes, but it might be, let's say 10 minutes is the average view duration, but the video could be two hours long. That happens to me a lot on Think Media. I'll, I'll put out a longer video, 45 minutes, an hour, and I'll get an average view duration of like 10 or 12 minutes, which is actually amazing because across YouTube, the average view duration is around four minutes. Like the amount of time on the whole platform there's so many different niches, so many different styles of content, but the average view duration is around four minutes. So eight, 10 is crazy. And that's sometimes why longer form content's good. Even if people don't stick throughout the whole thing, if they dwell on one of your videos longer, then YouTube loves that fact and will potentially promote that video. And let's just talk about why that is. You know, the reason average view duration matters is YouTube wants people to be on the platform for as long as possible. They wanna be able to tell advertisers that people are not just watching short cat viral videos on YouTube, but they're actually watching substantial content and dwelling on YouTube just like they would dwell on traditional TV or Netflix or Disney Plus. They want people really spending minutes on YouTube. Minutes matter most. And so it's the average amount of time people spend watching your video. And one trend that you can take from our Think Media playbook is we've been doing some experiments with some very high impact videos, but they're not very long. Like we've made really high impact three and a half minute videos, a four and a half minute video, and the videos are doing well. But what we've noticed, at least in our niche, is that some of our 45 minute videos some of our hour long videos that really hold attention are being promoted more because YouTube wants more minutes. And so something they can experiment with. Can you try some short videos that are really punchy or can you try some longer form content and do your best to hold viewers attention? And a tip here on this one is video editing. Video editing is a great way to trim the fluff and keep viewers' attention longer because it's not just the length of the video, it's like can you hold their attention on the video, which brings us to number three of the four most important YouTube metrics. The third one is APV. What's that stand for? Average percentage viewed. All right, so average view duration, hour-long video, 10 minutes. It's just the amount of minutes that on average people are spending on that video. Average percentage viewed is the percent of completion based off the video length, right? So 10 minutes on 100 minutes of content is only 10% average percentage viewed. But eight minutes of a 10 minute video is 80% of average percentage viewed. This metric matters as well, YouTube loves it when people watch until the end of the video. And what we've been learning and noticing from our analytics is that both are good. If you have just really long form content, they get a lot of minutes, average view duration, great. If you also can have people watching until the end of the video, also great. And this is what we've been testing with some of these shorter, punchier videos. We've been having people watch 66% average percentage viewed, which if you can get over 50 or 60%, you're doing amazing. And we've noticed that that average percentage viewed also can have a big impact. As you maybe experiment with YouTube Shorts, obviously YouTube Shorts can only be maximum 60 seconds long. And in this case, it's gonna be average percentage viewed. You don't want people just watching five seconds of your 60 second YouTube short. You want them watching till the very end so that next short auto plays. So that's definitely an average percentage view metric. The metric to shoot for here 
recapping is if you could get a video to a click-through rate of over 10%. If you can get an average view duration of over eight minutes, and if you can get an average percentage viewed of over 60, 70% of that eight minutes, my friend, you assuredly have a viral video on your hands, especially if that video continues to be relevant to wider audiences. What do I mean? At some point, maybe your niche is underwater basket weaving. And there's only so many people that are interested in underwater basket weaving, right? And so maybe the click-through rate for that niche, super high, people are loving it, and everybody who's ever raised their hand by their viewer behavior, by the content they're consuming, by the search terms they're using on YouTube that has expressed interest in underwater basket weaving, they will probably be recommended your video because people that have the intent of wanting to see underwater basket weaving content, man, when they click through on your video, they spend the time, they spend eight minutes plus 10, 12 minutes on it, and they watch almost towards the end of the video, YouTube's gonna keep showing more, more people the video. This is how YouTube works. And so ask yourself, man, how can I hold people's attention longer? And the biggest tip here is trimming the fluff. Trying to take out maybe those dead spots, those boring spots, trying to take out unnecessary parts. You know, I don't know if you've ever, you know, started a movie that was like maybe amazing at the beginning. It grabbed your attention, but it got so slow and maybe the plot got confusing and the story started to get a little murky and you gave up in the middle of the movie. It's been very rare for me, but there's been times when Sony and I have been like, you know what? Like, I don't even care. Like, I just, I don't need, I don't need to prove anything to anyone. We don't need to be able to say we finished this movie. Let's just give, let's just give this one up, man. There's just no reason to make it to the end. Obviously, that can happen a lot on YouTube. Maybe it starts strong, but it kind of gets weak in the middle. Trim the fluff. Think about how you can not only keep people on the platform longer, but also keep them watching till the end of the video, which finally brings us to number four, which this is a very little talked about metric that is very important, and it's AVPV, and it stands for Average Views Per Viewer. What this tells you as you dive into your YouTube analytics on your channel overall, it looks at everyone who watched your YouTube channel, and it says, per viewer, how many videos are is the average viewer watching? And this is one that you want to increase because what this reveals potentially is if people are just stopping by your channel to watch a bit of information or some search-based content, or if they really are going deep with you and watching multiple of your videos in a bingeable session. So this is the average number of views your channel received per viewer in, a, in like a 30-day time period or whatever time period. So again, Search-based channels like Think Media, and this is one of the metrics we're trying to work on, we sometimes have somebody that just stops by to learn a piece of information and then they move on. But I kind of think about it like I recently heard in, in business. Your goal in business is not to make a sale. Your goal in business is to have a customer. Like I think about Starbucks is not even my favorite coffee, and, but it's a place that it's so convenient and it's accessible and I also love it because it's where I met my wife, Sonia, back when I was 21. I was going to Starbucks when I was studying the Bible at a local ministry school, and I would show up at 5 o'clock. And not only was that when my coffee addiction started, but that's when my Sonia addiction started because I started to try to get her attention. Eventually, we got married, and so Starbucks has a real special place in my heart. She worked there for 10 years, right? And Starbucks has not just made a sale for me. Over the last 10, 15 years, Starbucks has made thousands of dollars for me. I've repeatedly been inside, used their Wi-Fi, bought green juice there, bought the little egg bites there, the bacon sous vide eggs, come on, bought my you know spinach feta wrap there. I've, I've got my venti ice waters. I, I've repeatedly gone back to Starbucks. AVPV is the goal of your YouTube channel is to not just make one sale, but to have a repeated customer. And even if they're watching your content for free, you want people to keep coming back to your channel, not just watching one video, but do they watch four or five or six or seven videos? Depends on your niche, and this is a challenging metric, but if you can, let's break it down. Get somebody who sees your video for the first time, recommend it to them on YouTube, they click through. Then they watch eight, nine, or 10 minutes of it, and, and your videos are so optimized that they're watching almost to the end. And then when the video's over, or another video is recommended, 
They watch another two, three, four, five, six of your videos. That is a viral revolution on YouTube, my friend. Definitely easier described than implemented, but these are the metrics you wanna be thinking about when you think about your content strategy, when you think about how you're creating content and how you can improve your videos. And the biggest thing here is creating bingeable content that is on brand, creating content that is not just one-off topics, but that has a cohesive theme that people wanna watch part one, part two, part three, or they wanna keep coming back and watching more. This makes me think that sometimes, maybe it's easier for to do on a personality-based channel, because once you fall in love with that personality, you wanna watch more personality from that person. I think about comedians that I like, like John Christ, where he does a show every week called One Take, and so every week I watch one take. And so in a 30-day period, I think he's getting at least four views from me because I just keep watching his show. Phil DeFranco pretty much watched that multiple different shows because he's the common denominator of that. My wife and I love the show Daily Dose of the Internet, and it's these little quick bite-sized videos that are about four minutes long. We don't just watch one video on that channel. We could easily crush one, two, three, four, five of those. So I would imagine their AVPV is pretty big and they're getting millions of videos a day on their video on their videos. So definitely something to pay attention to. So how can you increase your CTR, your AVD, your APV, and your AVPV? You may wanna replay the video because I know those are some acronyms that are coming at you quick. And your YouTube education just went to a whole nother level, knowing four metrics which will absolutely help you grow as you dial these in. Let's summarize and talk about, a you know, make this a little more practical with how overwhelming this could sound. Summary point number one goal is just to get 1% better with every upload. You might be like, Sean, I barely know how to make a thumbnail. Like at video editing, video editing intimidates me. You know, how do I get average views per viewer? I barely have any viewers yet. Listen, YouTube's all about starting messy, punching fear in the face, but then getting 1% better with every upload. And when you have better insights into how YouTube works, it will influence your content so you can think about, man, how do I make the topic catchy, the thumbnail catchy? How do I grab attention at the beginning and keep attention? And then finally, point two to summarize is to keep working on these metrics and just try to get a little bit better on each one. It's not about making giant leaps. It's about just making practical steps, little bits of increase, and maybe even honing in on just one. I think trying to even grow on all four all at once could be overwhelming. But maybe just focus on, I wanna get better at thumbnails. I wanna study some of the videos on Think Media on thumbnails and how to use Canva to make better thumbnails. Because as you tweak one area of your YouTube channel and your content strategy, small tweaks lead to giant peaks. A rising tide lifts all ships. If you're getting better click-through rate, you're getting more viewership. More viewership is leading to more people watching more videos and it be can become an exponential effect that maybe starts small but creates a big snowball of momentum over time. Well, I hope your notebook is full of all of the acronyms that you needed to know and really all of the metrics that matter on YouTube. Go back and re-listen to this episode over and over if you just wanna learn more about exactly what matters for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're ready to take your next step on YouTube, then I highly recommend that you go to our free YouTube class at thinkmasterclass.com. We're diving into the three secrets for YouTube success and how you can grow your YouTube channel today. So go to thinkmasterclass.com if you're ready to get started. And make sure that you rate and review this podcast over on iTunes. It means the world to us when we're able to read your comments, but also it helps us get this podcast in front of other purpose-driven entrepreneurs and content creators just like you. And today's review comes from Sophie Lou 222 She says, as a new YouTuber, Think Marketing has been my go-to for the advice and tools to succeeding on the platform. Forever grateful and love the new podcast where I can listen on the go with the cutest emoji girl dancing. Uh, yes, we are here to help you with the tools to succeed on 
this platform. And today's episode was no different. I hope that you got a lot of value out of this episode and I wanna encourage you to share it with a friend. I'm sure that you know other purpose-driven content creators or people that you know should be rocking their YouTube channel. So share this podcast with a friend and I cannot wait to see you in our next episode.